In the last three episodes, we've talked about the rise of the SimCity series through its first three iterations, Classic, 2000, and 3000. Now, we've reached the apex of SimCity and what I would argue is the magnum opus of the series. Let's talk about SimCity 4. SimCity 4, dropping the iterative 1000 from its title after 2000 and 3000, was released in January 2003 for Windows and later the same year for Macs. The first significant difference was that with SimCity 4, we saw the full realization of a fully 3D city building game. In a sense at least. SimCity 2000 and 3000 were both built on 2.5D semi-isometric style graphics which means that it was pseudo 3D, but not really. Essentially, they just used 2D sprites that could rotate from different angles. SimCity 4, on the other hand, used actual 3D models with its engine, although the camera is still restricted in what is known as a fixed trimetric orthographic projection, which just means that it still looks like the classic isometric view. This was done for performance reasons because it was a very taxing game. One of the biggest criticisms at the time of release was that it was just too taxing for computers of the time to handle, and the developers likely recognized how taxing it was while developing it, hence them preventing free camera movement. Despite this criticism, SimCity 4 was still received very well by the public. It was considered difficult, more difficult than its predecessors, but that was as much of a criticism as it was an allure to some of its more serious users. Also, composer Jerry Martin saw a return in SimCity 4, helping to produce another great soundtrack which holds some absolute bangers. Even though critical reception was lower than for the past three games, it still managed to sell like mad, earning awards in the UK for how many copies it sold and maintaining its position as the 8th best selling PC game in 2008, outselling Age of Empires 3 and its successor game, SimCity Societies we'll get to you soon. Also, while doing research on this game, I found out that Herman Cain, the businessman who ran for president in both 2000 and 2012, has an odd relationship to this game. In his 2012 bid, he released a tax plan, which he called the 999 plan, which would replace all current taxes with a 9% income tax, 9% federal sales tax, and a 9% corporate tax. The reason I bring up the 999 tax plan is one studious gamer, Amanda Terkel, who wrote a piece on the Huffington Post, noticed that Herman Cain's tax plan bears a striking resemblance to the default tax rates of SimCity 4, notably 9% on commercial, industrial, and residential. Kip Katsarellis, a senior producer for Max's, had this to say on the other hand. We encourage politicians to continue to look to innovative games like SimCity for inspiration for social and economic change. While we at Maxis and Electronic Arts do not endorse any political candidates or their platforms, it's interesting to see GOP candidate Herman Cain propose a simplified tax system like one we designed for the video game SimCity 4. Does this mean anything? Well, if you ask Herman Cain, and yes, people did ask Kane's political campaign, they actually didn't answer. Kane's campaign spokesperson, J.D. Gordon, only replied with, well, we all like 999. And Rich Lowry, the Ohio Wells Fargo employee that designed the plan, apparently did not return a request for comment regarding whether he is a fan of SimCity and looked to the game for inspiration. Now, a receptionist that New Lowry said she doesn't think he's much of a game person, but I think we can all spot a gamer when we see one. Anyways, when SimCity 4 was released, it was released with a terrain generator tool which allowed for users to create their own maps and was available online but has since become hard to find, as well as its own building architect tool, like the one released with SimCity 3000. The building architect tool for SimCity 4, however, requires GMAX, 
a computer graphical modeling software, meaning it wasn't tied in with the game like the Urban Renewal Kit for SimCity 2000 or the Building Architect tool for SimCity 3000, which is kind of really disappointing. What SimCity 4 lacked in on-release tie-ins, however, it made up for in its expansion pack and in mods. Later in 2003, the same year it released, SimCity 4 received an expansion pack known as Rush Hour. While it added a fair number of additions to roads and travel-based buildings, what it most memorably did was let you interact with your city in a way not really seen since SimCopter with SimCity 2000. The new You Drive It mode let you drive anything from cars to trains to boats to planes and even tanks around your city as well as do occasional missions for respect and money. It wasn't perfect, it had bugs, but man was it fun. Maxis said it planned to release more expansion packs, but that never happened. So it seemed like the community picked up where Maxis left off. On the numerous SimCity fan sites, you can find dozens, hundreds, thousands of mods and user-made add-ons for SimCity, ranging from prop additions to what feels like total overhauls of the mechanics. The most notable of these is NAM, which stands for Network Add-on Mod, which added even more modes of transportation and roads and let players fine-tune every aspect of their transportation methods in their city. But today, I don't want to try any of those mods, as cool and as fun as they were. Let's look at SimCity 4 the way that Maxis intended for us to look at it, and see how it stands today. Alrighty, welcome to SimCity 4. Uh, this is a little region that I put together using a region generator tool. So it looks pretty neat here, because if you ever try to make them by hand, uh, they end up looking like trash. Let's go ahead and start the city. I made a little city down here just to get some B-roll footage for earlier in the video. Uh, let's start a new one right by it. I just finished playing SimCity 3000 not too long ago, so expect a lot of comparisons to that one. Alright, so the first thing that I noticed when I started playing this game again was the fact that when you start zoning, it builds some of the roads for you. Now this was really nice when I was a kid, because I was stupid, but now that I'm not as stupid, it feels like it's, I don't know, limiting in a way, because it just kind of, you know, it makes everything very rectangular, like I can't, I mean I can, I can, I can go back, I can, you know, say, oh okay, I don't want that road there, I want the street to go this way, oh well, actually no, streets, never mind, streets can't go diagonally, but, I mean I could have it I could have it go like this, and then in like that, but it's just a little more limiting. I'm not a huge fan of that, but it is what it is. Something else about SimCity 4 that I remember is the fact that the um, everything costs, uh, everything has like a monthly cost. So the water, the power. Every utilities, any pretty much any building has a monthly cost of some sort. And I think that's what a lot of people feel makes it so difficult, but really most of the services you don't need for a very long time. So if I just let the city grow for a minute. See, now I am very quickly making money. Don't need to worry too much about, you know, the specifics. It's just... I'm making money. Easy as that. I do really like some of the more in-depth stuff here though, because before you could only just very broadly change taxes and now you can very specifically change taxes. And see, this is kind of the issue that I have is unless you put yourself at like the hardest difficulty it's not very difficult to start making a profit pretty pretty quickly. I mean, and even then, the only thing that that does, putting yourself at the harder difficulties, is slow you down a bit. Just because it doesn't take you that long to start making a lot of money. So, 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to very much more specifically design stuff. And just kind of create it in like small little blocks. The pop-ups are very annoying. Uh, they kind of just come at you very aggressively. I much prefer the ticker down at the bottom just kind of being right there, not constantly bombarding you with updates. That's kind of annoying. There are a lot of nice little touches. Like when you build a road, uh, it's a neat little touch that they actually have a construction crew come out and, you know, work on it. I think that's I think that's neat. And the way that they actually have buildings being constructed instead of just, you know, at like over time, like day to day, the scaffolding and stuff actually gets higher and the building gets uh, grows and stuff like that. It doesn't just like appear like it does in other ones. If you really have the patience, the time and the know-how, you can really create a very intricately designed city with this. Um, I mean, it's a good game. It's just, you know, because of the stuff that it does streamline, it makes it a little hard to be, be that intricate all the time. So I've mentioned it in a couple of other videos about farms and just talking about it in general, but I do really like that they actually have farm zones in SimCity 4. I just feel like it's nice to have a predictable way to create farms because, you know, in 3000 it was possible, but it was also a pain. And so just a way to, you know, have some farms made. It's nice. Oh. I've never noticed that. It's a little drive-in. It's a little... That's the intro for SimCity 3000. It's cute. You know, I bet there's probably a mod that honestly sounds pretty nice would just make it so it doesn't... Oh, Jesus Christ. And see... <laughs> that... I don't like how it just moves you to wherever the disaster is, because it does that. Where it just destroys whole portions of your city. You know what? I guess I don't have to fix that. But I have had it happen where I built the city. It was going very nice. And then I accidentally just destroyed half of it because it just pulled me across half the map. Now's a good time actually to try out some of the data views, specifically traffic. This one's really cool because it actually shows you basically everything. Um, it even breaks down to morning and evening commutes, which are basically the same. Um, but, you know, it helps you to find where the issues are. So, let's just use this for a little bit. I do like how in SimCity 4, as compared to 3000, you can just build straight through buildings. It definitely has its downsides, like I showed earlier, by building a road through just a bunch of buildings. It definitely has its upsides, so that I don't have to just destroy every single building in the, in the path of wherever I want to develop a new road or whatever else, because that gets annoying. Before we go back to the video, though, I want to try and play with some of the You Drive It stuff. So, Dr. Vu steals a bus. So there's two types of different missions. There's the negative mission that you see here, 
where it lowers your mayor rating in return for cash. And there's an alternative where you do something. Usually you don't get money, but you do increase your mayor rating. I don't care about my mayor rating, so let's steal a bus. And it's pretty simplistic, um, like, game mode, but it's very fun. There's two ways to drive. You can either have it stuck to the road, like I have it right now, or, or you can kind of turn on your own and just do, like, this sort of free roam type thing, which is more fun. Uh, it's a bit finicky. The U drive it mode is definitely not perfect. Where the AI is kind of terrible like that. But, you know, it could be worse. Not That's not much of an excuse, but it could be worse. It's especially bad when you're in an area with a lot of skyscrapers or just towers in general. Around here, it's not too bad. But if I go around any towers, it starts to obscure me. And even though they, they kind of solve this by having the cars still be visible with like that weird green shadow thing, it does still definitely hinder the ability to drive places. And in all honesty, this is kind of just a novelty. I mean, I'm just kind of driving through my city, causing some havoc. No big deal. It's going to take a long time. I'm going to fast forward until I get to the bus stop or if I have anything interesting to say. All right, as I'm coming into the final stretch here of this bus journey, the you drive it mode, a lot of fun. There's some really neat ones, but like the, the fighter jet is fun. The tank is a lot of fun, but like I said, it is kind of just a novelty. It's not anything that I would say is, you know, alone worth getting rush hour. It's everything else. It's the little updates here and there. Just the fact that, I mean, if you want technical support or mods, I imagine you pretty much need to have Rush Hour installed. But you know, that's how it goes. But yeah, I mean, I think that about does it for me with SimCity 4. Um, it is still fun. It's a very fun game to come back to. Oddly enough, it's the first one that I was disappointed by, though. Not because it's bad but because I've been playing a lot of SimCity 3000 lately and just as far as the individual city aspect goes, uh, it really is kind of lackluster, I'll be honest. You know, the things they added with the Rush Hour expansion are nice, but it doesn't improve it that much. And the whole game just kind of has like a little bit of a dingy look to it. Uh, graphics are nicer. You zoom in, it's a lot higher you know, resolution than it was in 3000. I mean, even like the little people look better, but it's better if you want to, you know, just play like a really long form city builder, or if you want to download a bunch of mods that way, and you get a lot more customization. SimCity 4 is one of those games where you really kind of need mods to play it the way that you want to play it, play it the way that it's intended. And especially once you've played it with mods, it's hard to go back. After playing it with mods for several years now, playing the vanilla version is very, I don't know, underwhelming. But it is still very fun. If you haven't played it, I recommend trying it out. And just keep in mind, you know, maybe take your time with designing some of the cities. Maybe don't start on easy mode, maybe like medium, just so it's a little bit more of a challenge. But yeah, with that, Back to the video. Even without the mods, SimCity 4 was known for its in-depth simulation of how a city works. And this is why I consider it to be the magnum opus of the SimCity series. 
The way it simulates traffic, urban development, and movement between cities holds up today because it was massively impressive for its time. To this day, there are still very few city building games that can compete with SimCity 4, which is why, two decades later, it is still showing up near the top of most lists discussing the top city building games. SimCity 4 truly was the peak of SimCity's mountain, and in the next episode, we'll talk about the first tumble down the other side of that mountain, SimCity Societies. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed my video, and subscribe to my channel with notifications turned on to see more of my content. Leave a comment with your thoughts on this video or topics for the future, and if you're interested, I've also made plenty of other videos, so go check those out too. This has been Historical Hindsight, and I'll be seeing you soon.